Hi, this video is going to cover the ACT topic of complex numbers. Uh, so we're going to take a quick look at um, the definition of imaginary numbers and complex numbers and then take a look at how we do operations with complex numbers and how those differ than doing operations with expressions with just simple variables in it. And then I've got three problems picked out, uh, some practice problems from the ACT that we're going to solve and discuss as well. Let's take a look. Okay, so i is defined as the square root of negative 1, i standing for imaginary. And what that allows us to do is take the square root of something like negative 25. Uh, so we can split up the negative 25 into um, 25 and negative 1, and then split it up into the square root of 25 and the square root of negative 1. So the square root of 25 is 5, but then the square root of negative 1, as we've defined, is i, and then the answer to this becomes 5i. So it allows us to take the square root of a negative number. Now an important concept when you're doing operations with complex numbers is i squared. So if i is the square root of negative 1, then i squared is going to be the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1, which just ends up being negative 1. So a very important concept when we're doing operations with complex numbers is that i squared is negative 1. So whenever we're doing uh, operations, we treat a variable just the, i just the same as any other variable. So if we had 5i plus 10i, we would get 15i. 4 times 3i, we would get 12i. But when we get a case like this, 6i times 5i, we'd get 30i squared. But rather than a regular variable, we've got to go one more step now because the i squared is equal to negative 1. So we've got to replace the i squared with negative 1. And this becomes 30 times negative 1 or just negative 30. Okay, let's take a look at how to simplify something. So if we have i in the denominator, uh, since i is defined as a square root, we can't have a square root in a denominator to have something fully simplified. So 5 over i, we can simplify that by multiplying both the numerator and denominator by i. So if we multiply the numerator and denominator by i, we're multiplying by 1. Uh, so we can do that. So the numerator is going to be 5i, and the denominator is going to be i squared. And again, we need to know that i squared is negative 1, and we're going to replace i squared with negative 1. So then 5i over negative 1 just becomes negative 5i. Now, if we have a more complicated, where we've got, um, that was just an imaginary number in the denominator. What if we have a complex number in the denominator? How would we simplify 3 plus 2i? Well, we're going to multiply by something that's called the conjugate. So the conjugate of 3 plus 2i is going to be 3 minus 2i. And you'll see why we chose that particular thing in a second. Um, and it's just because that's going to help us cancel out so we have no more imaginary number in the denominator. Let's see how that's going to work. So if we multiply the numerator, the 3 times the 3 is 9, and the 3 times the minus 2i is going to be minus 6i. But let's take a look at what we do with the denominator. So the denominator, we've got to multiply 3 plus 2i and 3 minus 2i. So let's multiply this out by FOIL. Uh, the first two is going to get us 9. The last two, I mean the outers, is the 3 times the minus 2 is going to get us minus 6i. The inners, the 2i and the 3, is going to get us plus 6i. And the last two, the 2i and the minus 2i, is going to get us minus 4i squared. Now when we do the math here, the minus 6i and the plus 6i cancel out. And those middle two terms are always going to cancel out when we pick a conjugate. When we pick the same two terms but a different sign, those two middle terms are going to be the same except with different signs and they're going to cancel out. So those two are going to cancel out. We're just going to be well with 9 minus 4i squared. But we're going to replace that i squared with negative 1. So this becomes 9 minus 4 times negative 1 or 9 plus 4 or 13. So that whole denominator now has no imaginary number in it anymore. So it's just a whole number. So that denominator is 13 and then to do the final step to simplify this we just split it up into two parts the 9 over 13 
and the minus 6 over 13i. Okay, I've got three practice ACT math problems that have to do with complex numbers. Let's take a look at this first one. So this first one is saying that a positive integer n, we have i to the n equals 1. So which of the following must be true? Um, so let's take a look. So and it tells you that i squared is negative 1, so that's helpful. So, um, so i to the first power is just i. i squared, which we talked about, which they also give you right here, is negative 1. i to the third power is just going to be i to the first times i to the second, or i times negative 1, or negative i i to the fourth is going to be i squared times i squared or negative one times negative one or positive one and then the pattern repeats after this because i to the fourth is one anytime you have a multiple of i's four of them are going to make one so it's just 1 times this, so we can take out multiples of 4. And then the value of this is just going to be i squared, which in this case would be negative 1. So let's go look back to the problem. So it's telling us that, um, that the value is going to be 1. So if we divide by 4, what does the remainder have to be for us to be 1? So we have all these groups of 4. If we have one i left, in other words, the remainder is 1, it's just going to be i. If we have two i's left, it's going to be negative 1, i squared. If we have 3, the remainder is 3, it's going to be negative i. And if the remainder is 0, then we just have multiples of 4 i's, which is just going to be 1 times 1 times 1. So if we have 0 left, the value is going to be 1. So if we know that i to the n equals 1, then if we divide by 4, any set of four i's multiplied together is going to be one, and the remainder is zero. So this first one is going to be our answer. That's going to get us a number that equals one. Okay, on the second problem, we're doing four plus i squared. Uh, let's just write that a different way, right? So let's just write that as four plus i times 4 plus i it might just be a little easier to see then multiply it out by foil 16 plus 4 i plus 4 i plus i squared combine our like terms 4 i and 4 i is 8 i here they tell you this i squared equals 1 um, the SAT usually doesn't tell you that, uh, but the I squared equals negative 1, so we can replace I squared with negative 1 and get 16 plus 8I minus 1, and then combine our like terms. The 16 and the minus 1 is 15 plus 8I, and that matches our answer right there for J. All right, and the third problem, we're going to multiply negative 3i plus 4 times 3i plus 4. And again, let's multiply it out. Negative 9i times, I mean, negative 3i times 3i is negative 9i squared. We're going to get minus 12i and plus 12i. And then the 4 times 4 is going to get us 16. Now the minus 12i and the plus 12i are going to cancel each other out. And we're just going to get minus 9i squared plus 16. Um, we know that i squared is going to equal negative 1. So we've got to replace this i squared with negative 1. So we're going to get negative 9 times negative 1 plus 16 which is 9 plus 16 or 25 as our answer which matches answer C. 
Now notice that the eyes canceled out. Um, it might not have been as apparent here um, that this is a conjugate, but it's just rewritten the other way. So this is just the same as four plus three i and four minus three i flipped around, right? So it's just a conjugate. That's why we get the middle terms cancel out and we get 16 plus nine is 25. Thanks for watching. If you have an ACT test coming up, good luck with it. Um, if you're new here and you'd like to subscribe, you can do so right over here. I've got other suggestions of videos for you to watch right here. Uh, please comment below on things that you liked about the videos or ways that I can improve it. And thanks for watching and come back again soon.